All right, how's everybody doing again? Pretty cold today. It's like 20 degrees out. And uh, believe it or not, in the next couple of days, it's going to go up to 50, 52, 55, and then by the next day, maybe the 60s. It's weird weather, just like everything else, right? All right, I want to show this interesting double barrel uh, because to me, I think it's it's got great character. It's been around the block probably... I don't know, a couple hundred thousand times, as you could tell. Um, to me, I just love, love character of uh, firearms and like any history behind it. But I don't know too much about this, so I would have loved to know who owned it, how they used it, etc. But you could tell they cherish this double barrel and uh, the way they kept it going for many, many years. <clears throat> All right, it's very light. It's extremely light. It's a 16 gauge exposed hammers. Okay. Now, this is a uh, just a wall shotgun. You know, uh, there's no way I would shoot this shotgun. It's just a wall hanger. Um, just by you know appreciating the uh, the way it's been uh, preserved. Uh, or at least tried to be preserved. Uh, if you wanted to shoot this ever, ever again, it would have to have a lot of work to it. So, um, but I just love just picking it up once in a while and looking at it and wish I could put it on the wall. But I'll tell you a little bit about it. It took me a little while to find out some information on it. Um, it has been repaired, the rim, the top rib, rib, I mean, um, the piece that's in the back here came off, and, uh, this is actually your piece that holds it in the cross bolt, so even if you went to try to shoot this, this thing would probably just pop right out, but there was two pox, or two part epoxy that this piece was, uh, glued back on here just for aesthetics, uh, to keep it, you know, together. And as you can see, there's some metal missing right here, uh, which I was going to fill one day just to fill that and sand it a little bit, just to make it a little bit cosmetically appearance, you know, better. Uh, so how I found out what the, who made the shotgun is by the stamping right here, if you could see. See, it's a knight on a horse. Okay. And that stamping... When I went on the internet, uh, told me it was manufactured by Bayard Arms, B A Y A R D, Bayard, and Piper uh, Arms uh, or Piper Firearms. That was one of their trade trade names, the Bayard, and then that was one of the things they used to stamp their firearms with was the uh, the knight riding the horse. <clears throat> so. But this is one of their better shotguns at the time. Uh, Piper, I think, was in business from 1859 to 1957. They had over 40 or 50 trade names. They were the biggest uh, trade name manufacturer of firearms. And mostly hardware guns. Some custom firearms. Um... Uh, some really, really expensive ones, but mostly your hardware trade name uh, shotguns and firearms were made by Henry Piper, and they were very, like, reasonable priced. Um, this particular one was probably not cheap in the day. Again, it's very, very light, and it is 16 gauge. So to carry this thing, I, I would say this thing weighs no more than five pounds. And um, so... And then, and then the engraving, as you can see, had a lot of engraving on the receiver. Uh, has some engraving on the uh, trigger guard. Does have its serial number here. Has some engraving on the uh, hammers, on the receiver, the, the side locks back here and in front. And then on top here, which is kind of worn off, of course. 
Now the hammers are still in good shape. They still cock back. Nice spring action. It's got the original hammer screw on both sides, which is pretty cool. But this thing's been around the block. As you can see, whoever owned it went out of their way to try to fix it, wrapped a piece of leather around it. You can see a lot of the glue, a lot of the wood's missing, where it kind of meets up into the receiver. As you can see, it's popping out here. So, the forearm has a dealy latch, which is cool. But they, they uh, I guess at one time they put some sling swivel here. I don't know, maybe they originally put it up here underneath this barrel here, because there's two holes. But then somebody put a hole here and probably was a swivel. And as you can see, there was a hole here for the swivel. And then what's really cool, there's a Mexican coin in the stock. And that's really cool. So, I didn't really look that coin up. But it's really interesting. This was somebody's personal firearm with a Mexican coin in it. And they really, really went out of their way to try to keep this thing operating. It doesn't have a butt pad. It's, it's missing the butt pad. Stocks on this part is pretty good shape. You know, he uh, probably was cracked right here. And then, of course, all around here. Has the greener cross bolt. So when you open it up, has a little hole there. And then, as you can see, the cross bolt would just go right through the hole. And that's what locks it. Okay. It is loose. Moves. Like I said, of course, this is a non-shooter. Um, has 25 and 3 quarter inch barrels. Doesn't look like it's been cut. I mean, it might have. You know? It's possible that it could have been cut down. But again, this is probably one of the expensive shotguns back in the day. Maybe it was custom ordered. Maybe it was made that way at 25 and 3 quarter inch barrels. That's the only markings that I found uh, for the manufacturer. Like I said, that's a trade name, the Bayard. But I don't find the actual Bayard name or the Piper name at all, at all on this firearm. Now you have the European mac, uh, markings, which will tell the chokes and the barrel measurement and everything else. But let me just show you here. It only has a couple. Has a marking here. Now I didn't really look these up, and I know if I look all these um, marks up, or you know these stampings. I'm sure it'll tell me a lot more about this shotgun. But it has a serial number. It is matching to the trigger guard. Matching to the uh, forearm. Matching serial number. And here's what's interesting. I don't know if you could see this. It'd be nice to focus it in. Nah, it's really hard. These are called proof marks. And it has a lot of proof marks on each side of this, underneath this barrel. Even has proof marks right here. Has the serial number right there. And more proof marks on this side. And this will tell you if you look up all these proof marks what year this was made, who made it, Belgium made, because most of these Piper guns were made in Belgium. 
Some were made in England. I guess you could see that there. It's missing the injector part right here. See, there's no injector. So I don't know if you can ever find one of them again. And you can see it's busted from the pin. And this is in pretty bad shape, the uh, bolt mechanism, the catch, I mean, right there, see. But again, it's it's just interesting. I would have loved to know the history about this and who owned it. Just snaps by right up like that. And then you put your forearm right there and snap it in. Isn't that interesting? I mean, I just love it. I mean, no, you can't shoot it, but I wish I could. It would be interesting on how this thing would shoot if it was in really good shape. It has great patina, but you know, I mean, I love the gold coin. I don't know if that's gold, I'm sure it's not, but I don't think it's gold. Like I said, I never looked it up. I don't know, I'll put it up here and maybe you guys can tell me a little bit about this coin. Let me see if I can get it better. There you go. Even if it was a gold coin, I would keep it in the gun here. But I don't think it is gold. It could be brass, copper, or whatever. Looks kind of old, but, but this leather patch is definitely old. I mean, look at that. That's pretty cool. Double trigger. Okay. I did look online. I think you could get a reproduction uh, butt pad. It's not actually a pad. It's just a plate made out of uh, rubber or plastic or whatever. That would be probably... The thing to do is get one of them and just uh, screw it on there. And uh, probably the only other thing I would love to do is just, uh, well, I don't think I'll do it, but if you could cover that up with some like silver solder or some sort, but I, I know solder won't stick to this. You'd have to really, really prepare it right. And that's probably what should have been done is to solder this or weld it or whatever. I don't know how they do it, but so this would not pop off. But being that it's two part epoxy, again it's you're not gonna go out and shoot it, so it's fine. You can even just get some two part epoxy and put it on there, sand it down a little bit and try not to sand the the horse down, the marking of the horse, the stamping. And uh, paint this rib black, you know? Spray paint it just the rib, the top rib. That seems intact. The top, oh, maybe. Oh no, it is. That's that's intact. I don't know. It doesn't move. Seems like it's pretty solid. I couldn't. I don't know. I don't know why when they make uh, uh, certain shotguns back in the day. I, I don't know if they still make them today. I don't know the reason why they have a seam right here. That I never understood. And then they have a little piece of steel from here. You know, some are a little bit larger and shorter or whatever. But there's always a seam on most shotguns. And I would think that would be a weak point. You would think that the rib, the top rib, would be extended from here all the way down in one piece metal. Instead of having a seam. Like I said, I just, I just don't get that. Maybe, I mean, I'm not an engineer, so I don't know why. Because it seemed like this top rib stayed together, but this is the piece that came off where the seam was. So maybe somebody could comment about that, why they make that like that. Okay. Again, it's made by Bayard, or I'm sorry, Henry Piper. Uh, manufacturing back in the day uh, I don't know when this was made maybe late 1800s 
the way this was could be early 1900s but probably late 1800s 1880s somewhere around there with a green or cross bolt so all right hope you enjoyed that one that one's very very interesting i might even put it up for sale just to get rid of it i mean for somebody else to enjoy it i've had it for quite some time so all right well have a good week take care